In this week's training timeout, we're going to take a look at some of the Corel basics. Corel Draw is a great program, and there's different ways to set it up. I'm going to show you how I have my workspace set up, how to work with Dockers, and what some of those Dockers can do for you. Let's dive right into Corel and take a look. So here we are in Corel Draw, and I've got it set up how I normally use the software. I've got the different Dockers open on the left and right hand sides of the screen here and I've got different dockers set up in each one of those panels there. And you can see it, you've got a little arrow slot here, a little arrow designator. I can drop those in on both of those and maximize the use of my screen. I've got my standard toolbar over on the left hand side here and all my color palettes over here. I see a lot of times people have uh, the, maybe one or two of the color palettes that they use a lot down at the bottom. You can move it around any way you want. There's a little three button kind of handle at the top of it. You grab a hold of that. I could have it out in the open here or put it on the left or right hand side wherever I want it. I like to have all my colors together on the side that I'm using. I've got my Roland Spot Color library and the Roland Verseworks library here and then a custom spot color library I use in a couple different projects. So you can see everything out where I need it and ready to use. But let's talk about the dockers a little bit. Um, the two dockers that I use probably the most out of everything is object properties and my color docker here. With the object properties and color docker, to open or close any docker, I'll, I'll close this one out. Um, you go to window and then dockers and then you can pick the docker that you want to have open. There's a huge list of different ones in here and you can customize it a lot of different ways. And the properties one is right here. So I'll click on that and I open it over here. I could grab this one and, and have it kind of as a floating docker. I could put it over to the right hand side here and involve it with these dockers. Um, you, can, you can do it any way you want. I like having a little bit of separation there. The object properties on the left hand side there and I actually didn't drop it in with the other one. We'll combine these two. There we go. And it's got little tabs here. So the object properties, one of the things that I use it the most with is uh, I'm working with different graphics that may have a fill or an outline or a combination of both. And it's a quick way for me to, to identify with the graphics. So say we'll grab the JC in here on this. And I can see the uniform fill. I can change the color on it. I can work with the fountain fill, pattern fill, or anything in there I want. I can click on over to the outline properties and change the outline of this object. Maybe I want to give it a one millimeter outline there, and I can change the color and work with that. Make it behind the fill. I can scale it and everything. All these controls are right here readily available for me. Instead of going over to the, the toolbar here, going to the outline pen and then choosing it, having to work with the color or open up that box there. I've got it open and all my object properties are right across. You can see how many are in the selection, the details, if there's a link with it. I can edit all that right there. There's quite a bit that you can edit with this right off the bat. Um, so a very, very useful docker and I have it open all the time there. My color docker here is if I'm going to be working with different palettes, I need to pick a spot color, say for it. I've got the click on the spot color, I can use the Roland spot color library if I'm printing from a Versa cam and I can choose any of the different libraries I want by just clicking on that and it's taking a second for me. It'll open up all the different um, color palettes that you have available to you and I can pick whichever one I'm going to be using for that project. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful little tool to have the color docker right there too. Let's go back over to here and we're going to tell it to have no outline now and put it back the way it was. In my other dockers, I use the transformation one a lot. I can type in directly to my sizing and do all my skew and angle, rotation and everything. All this is generally available up over on the top here too. I've got it open in the, the toolbar up there. So there's a couple different places that you can work with that there. Uh, but the transformation tool is pretty powerful. I'm going to skip a couple, skip one right there and go to the color palette manager. This one just allows me very quick access to the different palettes and having them open or closed. You can see it's almost like an eyeball right there icon. If I were to click on that, it, it takes that one away and I can open it back up and there's my spot color library right there again. And I'll move that guy over because I prefer to look over to the side there. So this is how we open and close different color palettes in there. And when I'm working with many different projects, it's nice to have the palettes available to me in different spots here and be able to open and close them or access them right away. 
The next one, the object manager here. This allows me to see the different layers I'm working with and if items are curves, I can take a look at it. And we'll go back to that JC and give this one an outline to it. I'll put one millimeter, one millimeter there. And if you look at it now, it's a curve, but I can see my properties on the bottom. I've got my fill color and my outline color right there. I could right click and break the curve apart and adjust everything about that piece right here from the object manager. So pretty powerful little spot there too and great for diagnosing issues that may be inside of a graphic. Then you've got your character formatting for any of your typesetting you're doing or anything like that. And probably my favorite one over here is the color styles. Um, one of the great things about color styles palette or color styles docker, excuse me, is that it gives me the ability to transform a graphic very quickly and easily and adjust all of the colors that are inside that graphic. So let's take and select everything that's inside the graphic here. I can press down control and tap A, that'll select all. And then I'll drag this on over to the color styles docker and let go. And you'll see it'll come up with all the different colors that are in that graphic. I can see them real quickly here and maybe I want to change over my CMYK black to uh, a gray color. So we could select that one color right here and right click on it. I'll edit the color. It'll come up in a second with my, my color palettes here and I'll be able to choose what color I want. And when I clicked on that it actually brought it open on the separate screen so we'll drag that over. That's what was going on there. It opened it up in a screen off to the side. So I could pick from the eyedropper tool here, I may click on that and I'll pick a color over in here. Say we're going to change this all to a grayish color. Select that. That's my old color. This is my new color. And when I hit OK, you'll see it, it'll change it in the graphic right there and right here. So I wanted the big black back in here as an even lighter gray, so we'll edit that color. And there's our color edit color style docker that opens up. I'll use the eyedropper tool again and we'll go with a lighter gray on this one and hit OK and you see it'll change it throughout the entire graphic. So this is a, a very powerful tool if I've got say a design that has a red in it and I need to change all of the red in the design over to a green I can open this up, drop the the entire graphic into there and access all the different colors very quickly and change them over. So you can see that there. Um, the last one that I have open here is the bitmap color mask and I use this a lot for when I'm working with roster images and I need to mask out a certain color and everything. And we'll have a, a future video on working with that a little bit more. So, real simple way to set up your Corel Draw. Open the different dockers that you want. Again, to open up a different docker, you just hit Window, Dockers, and then you choose the docker you want open. Um, when you're done with all of that, you're going to go to Tool, and under Options here, opened in the separate window there, and we've got our workspace here. You can edit out all of the different workspace options in it. Um, you can have it open up different documents or have it do different things for you. Show the Corel Tutor. I really recommend people go through this and take a look at the different settings. You, you might be surprised at some of the things that are in there. So we can take a look at the different options once you're done with all that. We'll hit cancel on that because I've got them the way I want. And under customization here, one of the things I want to show you guys is under workspace in here I can save this workspace. So right now it's the X5 default workspace. I could create a new workspace and maybe call it uh, move this window over again. We'll call this Steve. And I like this workspace Steve preferred. We'll call it that. And we'll hit OK on this. And now what will happen is it's saving everything that I've done with this workspace, all the different dockers and everything about it, and it's going to set it as that. And I can tell the program that on startup that I want it to go with this one. So I could also have it go to the default workspace so it'll change everything over here. Or I can tell it that I want it to select the workspace at startup. And it'll come up with a dialog box when Corel starts up and I can tell it, yes, I want to use whichever one I have in there. So a uh, great way to save different workspaces for maybe different things that you're doing and get them all set for you. So that's an overview of Corel Draw workspaces and some of the dockers in there. I hope it was helpful to all of you. 
CorelDRAW really is a great program to work with. And once you have your workspace set up into something that's intuitive and easy to work with, and you have all the tools readily at hand for you, it makes life a lot simpler and your workflow faster and more productive. I want to thank everybody for stopping by this week for the training timeout. As always, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Stephen Jackson IW, so you get updates when all the new videos come out. You can go check out our other YouTube channel, imprintables.com, for more training tutorials and tricks in the trade. And then you can, as always, check out thegarmentedge.com for more articles on the industry and more on all of these specific topics that you'll see in the training timeouts. I want to thank you again for taking a minute out for this week's training timeout.